My name's Jan Bender. I came straight out of high school in 2001 and joined the Marine Corps. I deployed to Iraq between 04 and 05. It was a pretty exciting time to be in theater. It's a big part of my life. I did two tours in Iraq and my second tour was in May of 04 till I'll say September of 04. As soon as he got back, he started telling me stories about how close he was a couple times to not coming back. To be in their boots is to try and somehow understand what it was like for them to, to do what they did overseas in Iraq or Afghanistan. To try and understand the mental strain, the mental stress, the physical stress, the, the anguish, the pain, the, the roller coaster of emotions, the, the hypervigilance that you're on at all times, dealing with at all times, that it's so difficult and I can't even begin to imagine. In their boots really means to me is the perspective from the soldier's eyes, from the sailor, from the marine, all their eyes. They're soldiers and, and they went and did an assignment, but that, that assignment not only affected them, but it affected me, it affected you. It, affect, it affects everyone. You know, everybody has a different experience that went through when they were over there. Some were good, some were bad, some were horrible, some were great. So, um, you know, it kind of it puts you in our world. And personally, I've slept outside, outdoors, when I was, you know, actually living on the street, and that really, like, affected me. It's important for them to tell their story, very important for them to tell their story. It's vital to just have a shimmer or a glimpse into what it was like to be in their boots overseas. I was in Afghanistan from uh, September 02 until I got hurt in December of 02, December 20th of 02. I was the first person to find out. It was before Christmas and I was at my sister's house and we were baking cookies for Christmas to my cell phone rang. And uh, you know, it was the Colonel. He said, this is Colonel uh, Dylan, And I'm calling to tell you that, you know, your husband, Jerry was in a very bad accident. Well, at that point, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was one of his buddies, you know, just playing a sick joke, saying, ha-ha, no, just kidding, here's Jerry on the phone. I was waiting for it. It never happened. And um, I just went blank. And my sister got the phone and took care of it from there. Once we got to uh, shooting these RPG-8s, um, we put some, some of these uh, rounds in there. And uh, I, uh, I told... Everybody, you know, get, you know, get in your safe zones. So, uh, you know, I fire it, nothing happens, and I'm like, what the hell? So I go, hold on. So I cocked it again, and I fired it. Nothing happened the second time. I'm like, damn, I'll be damned. What, what the hell's wrong? And I'm like, well, let me just fire this third time. If nothing's going on, then, uh, then it must be a dud or error. Obviously, something's wrong, and I'll have to check it out. And um, so I fired it the third time, and that's when, that's all I remember. What was gonna happen beyond intense because it wasn't just the fact that he had his um, hand amputated, it was he had severe head trauma. So they didn't know what was gonna happen. Even though you look and, and you don't see your hand there, it's just disbelief, it's like, no. I'm like a freaking gecko, I'm gonna grow another one or some shit like that. You know, it's disbelief. Here I am, a Green Beret. You know, I'm the cream of the crop, fighting this war on terrorism. Now, um, they just nip me, or I just nip myself, I hurt myself, and now, um, now I can't do the same job. I mean, I, I know my job mentally. And just because I'm missing a hand, I can't do the same job that I could do, you know, prior to my incident. 